This is part five of a series of videos I have done on um, gram mole atom conversions. And so far, you have seen um, the conversions between gram and mole, and you have seen the conversions between mole and atom. And the purpose of today's tutorial is to put those conversions together into one big problem, and I'll show you some more realistic ways that you would possibly use this in a class or maybe out, you know, just in a chemistry-related field. Before we actually get to the problems, here's what I want you to think about. We have already learned how to go from gram to mole. And I can go back and forth between gram and mole all day long. Um, I know that if I'm going from gram to mole, I am basically dividing by the molar mass. And I'm just going to put mass here to save space. But remember that that molar mass comes from the periodic table. I also know that if I'm going the other way, if I'm going from mole to gram, I will multiply by the molar mass. Again, from the periodic table. So to toggle back and forth between gram and mole, you're going to have to use that molar mass from the periodic table. Then we learn how to toggle back and forth between mole and atom. And what we learned here was, if you're going from mole to atom, you will multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And if you are going from atom to mole, you will divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I love the way these come together because I think this suddenly makes it very clear how you're going to get from one end to the other. Um, as of now, we have not learned how to go from gram to atom. There is no direct path for that. Nothing that we would want to have to know all the information for. Um, we cannot go straight from atom to gram, but they both have this mole in common. This is kind of like home. So if I need to get from gram to atom, I'm going to have to convert gram to mole first, and then I simply go from mole to atom. You know each of these simple parts. Now when we draw that long line and those short lines, we're literally just adding another slot. And if you're labeling everything as you go, your units, gram, mole, atom, this is really a piece of cake. It is not hard at all. A couple things I want you to remember to make your life a little bit easier. And this frame is going to be a great place maybe to pause it and um, write down a few notes because these are always good notes for your notebook. We are never going to put a number with the word mole. We know it's an understood one. So never put a number with the word mole. Not at this point. And... Um, Keep in mind that if mass is involved or grams, you know, depending on the wording of the problem, it could be either way, that's where we're going to get our information from the periodic table. We're going to get the molar mass from the periodic table. If atoms are involved... That's where we're going to be using our 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So that said, um, again, you may want to pause it here just to make a few notes so that you've got them as we move on. I'm going to do two examples with you right now. And if this is something I need to come back to later and touch on some more examples, again, drop me a comment and I'll be glad to do that. So... I'm going to give you two kind of hands-on examples, since I know you can't be here to actually do this, but I want you to consider this um, silver band, okay? It's just a ring. You know, you can kind of see the size of it. We're going to um, just assume, we're going to pretend this is plain silver, 
And now you actually have enough information to where you can figure out how many atoms are in that band. You know, is it a million atoms? Is it 6,000 atoms? Is it a bazillion atoms? How many atoms make up that band? So I have already taken the mass of this band and the mass of this silver band is 22.8 grams. So basically we are starting with 22.8 grams of silver and we want to convert this to atoms. So I'm going to show you how to do this problem. It's really easy. This is where things start to get fun because you can actually see how would I use this information. So again, we're going to always write down the given and the given is 22.8 grams of silver. We're going to draw our long line a little bit longer this time and our short line. You can always write down the given, and then you just really ask yourself, okay, now what? Where can I go from here? Well, you've got a few hints. You know you're going to have to have gram on the bottom here because you have it on the top here. So you ask yourself, I can go from gram to what? The only place we can go is moles. So to go from gram to mole, if you'll remember back to one of those first videos, we've got to know the molar mass of silver. And if you look on the periodic table, you can see that silver has a molar mass of 107.87 grams per mole. So I'm going to write 107.87 grams of silver, labeling what it is, per mole. Notice there is nothing else written with the word mole. Understood one. Now if you cancel these grams out, you are now left with a mole. Think about it as you're always going from this to this, from this to this. That may help you think through it. Now, I already know that because mole is here, it's going to have to be on the bottom in the next step because they have to cancel. I also know no matter what kind of conversion I'm doing, there's not a number with mole. So now you ask yourself, can I go from mole to atom? Do I have the information I need to do that? And you do because you know that there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in a mole. So there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. In this case, it's silver per mole. Now, when you look at that, your moles are going to cancel and you are left with atoms on the top. As soon as you get to the unit you are looking for on top, that's kind of like your stop sign. I tell my students, hands off, you are finished with that part of the problem. So now we're ready to calculate everything up. Um, a lot of kids will run into some difficulties putting this into the calculator because they, in their head, they know how it should be put in, but they're not really giving it to the calculator in a way the calculator understands because it's not a person. So for simplicity, for beginning students, it's always good practice just to multiply everything on the top together. In this case, you're multiplying 22.8 by 1, by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So this is just a little intermediate scratch work step. And if you multiply all that, you're going to get 1.37 times 10 to the 25th. Now we're going to divide that by everything on the bottom multiplied together, which just happens to be 107.87. Again, I'm not worried about labels here because this is really just scratch work. When you divide 1.37 times 10 to the 25th by 107.87, you will get 1.27 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of silver. I can tell you, give or take a few atoms, how many atoms are in this silver band. Now, not to get into too much detail, but just to put this in perspective for you, everybody knows how big a grain of rice is. You know, grain of rice, just a little teeny thing, little grain of dry rice. If you had that many pieces of rice, you would need a cube, and this is, this is a little bit of a guess off the cuff, but I'm gonna guess maybe 120 miles cubed 
You would need a box that big to hold that many grains of rice, yet you have that many atoms in this band of silver. That gives you a wonderful comparison to tell you how tiny these atoms truly are. It's really hard to wrap your mind around without something to compare it to. And again, I'll do another um, tutorial later just trying to help you understand how tiny atoms are and also on the flip side, how gigantic that number one mole is. So let's do one more example here. I have weighed out about 15.7 grams of copper. So this is just a little 40 milliliter beaker, um, not very big. And you can see that this is really just um, covering the bottom of this little 40 milliliter beaker. Just to give you some perspective, that's my calculator beside of the beaker. So you can see about how much copper that is. So again, that is 15.7 grams of copper. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how many atoms are actually in this. You might look at this and say, oh, wow, I see atoms. And what you really see here is dust. You're not seeing individual atoms. I wish we could see atoms. That would be crazy exciting, but we can't. Not right now, especially not with the naked eye. So we're going to figure up using math and using these conversions, how many atoms of copper you have in the beaker. So we're going to write down our given, and I, I tell you what, we'll put kind of the problem here too. We're starting with 15.7 grams of copper, and we want to know again, how many atoms do I have? Give or take a few. So this is a good little problem you can learn how to do, and then you can go and press your parents later. So we're going to write down the given, 15.7 grams of copper, long line, short line. And um, we know grams are going to have to be on the bottom here. We know that because the name of this game is canceling on the diagonal. Now, to get mass for copper, that's very specific for copper, we once again are going to have to look at our periodic table. And we can see that copper has a molar mass of 63.55 um, moles per gram. So 63.55 grams of copper per mole. Mole is, again, by itself, no number with it. So that's going to help you remember the number has to go with grams, which makes sense because it's specific to copper. That gets rid of grams out of your hair. You're done with that. And now we know moles are going to have to be on the bottom here because they have to cancel. And we know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper per mole. Moles cancel, and now we're ready to calculate. So we're going to multiply everything on the top together, and let's see, 15.7, and I'm, you can punch in right along with me, times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd equals, that is, that doesn't look right, I'm going to put that in again, 15.7 times 6.02 times 10, remember to use that exponent button, 23rd equals, um, I'm getting 9.45 times 10 to the 24th And as I tell my students, check behind me on that always. I'm kind of working off the cuff here. And we're going to divide that by everything on the bottom, multiply together, which is 63.55. So divided by 63.55, it looks like I'm getting 1.49 times 10 to the 23rd. Atoms of copper. So that is how you go through the process of taking the known mass of an element and actually figuring out how many individual atoms that you have. In the next tutorial, it's going to be very similar to this. We're just going to take atoms and we're going to figure out what the mass of that would be. So um, one thing I would challenge yourself to do, if you're a student at home and um, want to try one of these by yourself, if you happen to have scales at home and you can measure in grams, or you could measure it in ounces if you have some kitchen scales and convert it to grams, get a piece of aluminum foil, crumple it up, and take the mass. You know that's pure aluminum. 
take that mass of aluminum and convert it to atoms. You can actually figure out how many atoms you have in that piece of foil. If you do that, drop me a comment. Let me know that you did it. Um, my students will be looking for you to see if you've actually tried that. Might be worth a little extra credit. So um, try these out. Um, practice them a few times. And the next post um, video will be going from atoms to grams. And then we just may have some additional problems.